G'day we all, I'm going to leave on this uh, fella for the near prime week because I use a primary of this one on the other one of the other flybacks. Have some high current and ZVS fun. Hmm, I don't know if there's enough wire I need to wind another big disc shape uh, donut secondary. That's the one is to get out of that uh, Lucas Hattonator. Yeah, this sort of put out some good current. There's some chunky wire already. There's a high current transformer. I'm going to plug it in. Oh, this one's quite loud. Yeah, that screwdriver was bloody warm. I'll measure, measure that. Definitely hear the oscillations, eh? Switching. Let's get the multimeter out. So what voltage we're getting on that thing. Depending on the number of turns there and how well, the current may vary. I'll show you the batteries out of the way. They're going to be pop with them soon if I get a chance. Plug it in. Five point five millivolts on DC. I might say it to AC, won't I? Wait a minute. Hundred and twelve volts? No way. Hundred and thirteen volts. Hundred and twelve point four volts. Shit, that's pretty good. I better not bloody touch those outputs. Then I was just a bloody about to too. Yeah, it's obviously going pretty fast. This multimeter doesn't know what's going on. Not a DC, obviously, because it's a transformer. So that's rectified. Transformers need to be working AC. Hundred and twelve volts. Holy crap! It's a loud one. Check screwdriver. My amp meter. My battery power supply. About three amps it's pulling. Slightly getting warm. ZVS is still cold. Capacitor's warm. Inductor's not even warm. Primer's a bit warm. Interesting. What could I power with such a low volt uh, low uh, volt uh, voltage there for a flyback that is? It's a loud one. I wonder if I can pop a light bulb with it. Let's see. 12 volt light bulb. Oh yes. Damn that was bright. Oh it just blew it. Yep. It's definitely 112 volts and blew it. Damn, that was bright. Hang on a minute. That didn't shock me, but it was not a good habit to do. Don't touch that while you try and short something out. It's over 100 volts. Not a good habit. It's warm. I wonder how much amps that is. I'll get me other amp meter here. Oh, hang on, that's a DC, that's an AC. No, this is a DC emitter, right, right. 240 volt light bulb, let's see that light, how, how it lights that up. Now be careful, this is 112 volts, treat it like the American mains. Yep, look at that. An inverter, hang on a minute, they had a bloody thumb in the camera. It's got to be careful here. I oh, also have a clean workbench doing these sorts of experiments so they don't get bumping wires and touch high voltage wires and stuff. Hold the isolated part. Oh, dear, the fill light's warm. 
Look at that. Pull the power off. Damn, the fair lot's warm. Everything, ZBS, everything's cold. The windings are uh, warm. The fair lot, though. Ooh, that's hot. Yo, the fair lot got bloody warm. Yowch. Hmm, none of that type of old, older type of fair lot doesn't like that frequency. Hmm, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine turns there. If I put another nine turns, I should get 240 volts out of this. And myself with a little T a little T forty volt ZVS inverter. Let that inver uh, the transformer cool. Try again. Yeah, not enough current there. Yeah. Pretty awesome stuff. Let's see if this is a light bulb. Here's a lower wattage. This is a, I think it's, I don't know what, what that is. It's all smeared off. Yeah, shadow, some might make a shadow so the camera pick it up a bit better. Here we are, 110 volts. The ferrite doesn't like that though. The ferrite must have turned to a different frequency. Or something. Hmm. Okay, viewers, I think I know what I've done wrong here. I don't know why it's so noisy, squealy, and these ferrites are getting so damn hot. I forgot to put the mic insulators between these uh, gaps to insulate these eddy currents. That's why it's getting hot. Yeah, that's where all my efficiency is going. It's shorting itself out and losing half its own output. Got to wreck these mic insulators back between the two halves of the ferrite core. That way, they will run much better. Alright, the insulators have been put back in. Let's give it a try now. It better be a lot quieter. Yep, a lot quieter. Much better, much better. Yeah, I said it was, thought it was DC. It's obviously a transformer. All transformers work in AC. Fair all iron core. So, just keep that in mind. Don't expect to run anything off the end of that. I don't expect it to be DC, because it ain't. Because it's a transformer, which is our output is obviously going to be AC. So you still need to rectify the output of that in order to get any DC voltages out of this. So you could make up a nice little switch mode power supply here. Convert DC to another higher DC voltage. In fact, if I the output of this, I can convert from DC voltages to another DC voltage. Have my own DC DC converter. Not even very warm at all. Okay, AC volts. How much are we getting now? I don't know if the output's changed. 130 volts. There we go. I got a bit more voltage out of it. Beautiful. Yeah, the fair light's much better now. Everything's happy. Let's see what, what can run on 130 volts square waveform. Incandescent bulb again. And it's just good properly insulated wire here. This is a 240 volt household wiring type wire. Here we are. Our inverter is working. Now I won't run this for long, but let's try to see if it'll again. Uh, square wave force not going to be good on this. Hopefully it won't pop. No, not enough to get it to start. Square wave form must have some sort of uh, thing to detect it. What else could I run on that? Let me think about it for a minute. Let's try a switch mode wall warp with this light on its output. Now it says a square wave and might damage the uh, switch mode if you run it too long. Usually. So they usually don't, switch modes usually don't care what sort of a, vo a vo uh, waveform they get. Okay. Obviously not enough to get this one to turn over. Alright, I found out why these, some of these adapters aren't working. Because it's, I don't think it's actually a switch mode adapter. It's a bit too heavy. Might have an iron core transformer in there. 
And same with this one for a better uh, cordless drill charger. The reason being it's not going to work because it's um, high frequency. It will overheat the iron core in the transformer in there. So it's not going to do anything. I'm going to see if this actual proper switch mode printer power supply works. This is a proper regulated switch mode supply. I won't care on if it's getting 100 volts or 240 volts, it should still give, give me an output. Alright. There we connect it here. On there. This is off the HP printer. This is a. I think it's a 32 volt. 32 volt, 1.5 amps output. I'll just touch those two figure eight connector pins here, see if we get any output. Turn it upside down so I can see this LED just lighting up. Get a good connection. Yep, the LED is lighting up. Look at that. The power supply works. Look at that. Yep, the LED is fully on. We've got full power out of this power supply. Look at that, huh? And then the internal capacitor is discharging inside that little uh, switch mode power supply. It actually works. Now I think um, I have heard of square wave generators popping certain power supplies, but usually, like off a UPS for example, things like this can run off quite happily. Things like this won't care what sort of uh, usually won't care what sort of waveform they're getting because they're only chopping it up and filtering it anyway. There we are, we've got that power supply running off this little uh, inverter here. So if you've got anything with a uh, very, very, very low uh, consuming energy saving switch mode wall wart, a very well regulated one, something like this, you could run it using this little uh, ZVS setup here. Let's try and see if I can find anything I can actually run, because uh, I haven't got anything that runs off 32 volts for this power supply. Another switch mode wall wart. This power supply is running a small portable DVD player. Let's see if this actually works. Yeah. Oh, well, we've got an output. Takes a while, but it's working. I can't get a good way to connect this thing. Hang on, let me get my jumper leads out. actually working. Depends on how much power this thing's rated for. Yep, that's powering up. Look at that. Oh sweet. Now this DVD player has a buggered up screen. That of the BGA chip that runs the LCD. I can't find what, what exactly but oh the screen itself's buggered or just something wrong with the uh, driver. I tried playing with the connectors but no go. So I use this to, to, to connect to my VHF modulator on my vintage TV. These cheap nasty ones, these older cheap and nasty ones tend to play um, uh, CDGs which is a karaoke type CD. Seems to have a DVD in it. Look at that! Sweet! Ah, UPSs, who needs them? <laughs> Look at that! It works! Sweet! I've found a set top box. This set top box needs 90 to 250 volts, 50, or 60, 50 to 60 hertz. Let's see, yeah, sounds more promising than that one. It's usually pretty power friendly, this one. Doesn't uh, suck much current from the grid, so to speak. I can just connect that there. Clamp that down, hopefully no short outs. It all depends on what sort of power supply these things use. Some may or may not like this uh, type of um, waveform. Oh look at that, set the box is working. Yes, set the box is running off my little inverter. It's burning up at the moment. Oh look at that, it works. Sweet. There we are. 
Like at least when I set that box using this thing. Works quite well. Yeah. That LCD monitor before this has a bit of inrush when I plugged it in and turned it on, so that's probably why I just couldn't power it. Too much inrush for this to handle, so I'm off of an experiment with secondary windings to provide a bit more current. That's pretty good. A little inverter's working. Yep, much cooler with the insulating uh, micro sheets in there. That's pretty good. Quite impressed with that. Thanks for watching. Now, so certain things on power supplies, I don't like the square wave treatment. That inductor there got a little bit too hot, so I shut the power off immediately. This uh, thing did run quite well. It was running quite happily. But uh, yeah, those little types of inductors, even though it's got a fair out core, there might be a slightly different uh, mixture of a uh, metal. Uh, what do you call it? A slightly different type of grade of ferrite, which is only designed specifically for our mains frequency. This uh, ZVS, several high kilohertz frequency, made that uh, inductor get a little bit too warm, so. Start, um, yeah, I could start the sun, so I shut it off immediately. So it's all still okay. So try these uh, homematic inverter experiments at your own risk. It must, um, if you are to use it as a proper inverter to run things like this, like a uh, 240 volt goodies, make sure it's a pure um, sign, senior sort of waveform, like a proper mains frequency is. Anyway, other than that, this thing works quite well. Thanks for watching.